morning, everyone. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. This is a follow-up from yesterday. We tried to go live yesterday and uh, got a little bit into it and then completely lost internet and didn't get it back till almost 7 o'clock last night. So uh, we're going to try this again. We've got a better connection already. And for those of you that were joining me yesterday, wait till you see this. I am like so excited to share this with you. More progress. Okay, I showed you this yesterday, but there is our new wall, which looks amazing. There is the mountain man working on the other part of the living room. <laughs> good morning, Angela. So progress is good, and it's really fun to share all this with you. I'm going to also show you my office real quick here. Go with me. I'm carefully walking around dogs and and just want to remind you that in order to have progress sometimes this is what it needs to look like absolute dishevelment good morning Holly so this big heap here is all things that I will be listing on our yard sale later actually when I'm finished here and I'm going to grab my coffee and we're going to head downstairs. I can see a bunch of you joining. I'm excited to have you. We're going to head down to my kitchen and we're going to have to just do this with noise. This is real life at the Trayer household today and here at Trayer Wilderness. But I will spin this around and show you how things are shaping up. Bear with me here. I'm, like I said, going down the stairs and it looks like a bomb. Oh! A bomb went off in our home, but this is progress, guys. Okay. So you've got your log cabin look with the chinking. This, keep in mind, this is all work in progress. Things aren't finished. Um, there's Eustace hanging over the staircase. He was in my kitchen. And then you have what I've been showing you for quite a few weeks now. There's Bowser coming down the stairs. But this is my has been my backdrop on several of the videos. And things are progressing real nicely. But as you can see, the bomb has gone off. The other day, you guys could have all joined me in my kitchen on the couch to have tea because the couch was in the kitchen. Right now, it's just kind of slapped in the middle of the living room. But here... You can see that the uh, log cabin look is continuing on this wall by the uh, stove will be all stone going up through there and you can see that finished wall. So it's just really starting to look awesome. It's so cozy. It was always cozy, but it's really looking amazing. The mountain boy is helping me in the kitchen. He's doing some dishes and I'm going to head into the kitchen. There we go. I'm going to go into the kitchen and finish up my bread. And like I said, this is real life at the Trayer household, Trayer wilderness. It's snowy outside and beautiful. And uh, we got stuff to do. So we're doing it and you're going to do it with me, right? Sorry for the camera movement today. I'm trying to move around things. I'm just going to show you my workspace today and show you a couple things. Um, I am making my bread. Um, this is actually the centerpiece for on my table where we keep our utensils and things. So it's kind of in the way things are moving around. But when, if you can envision, when that's all gone, all that's on my counter is just my cookbooks and my little corner there. Because one of the things that I did to make things easier, I was getting ready to sell this and I decided to utilize one of my desk organizers. It is a um, little rack that you can utilize to put your papers in in your office. I am using it to keep my supplements organized and off the counter. I've tried different things. I actually have a piece of pottery in there too, but um, with the varying things that I am taking and we want to keep things pretty so we can show the house, probably be doing a really nice video for you guys soon too. Um, but just thought I'd show you that um, organizing supplements and medications can be a real drag. And I'm also going to put something in the description below um, of something found for actually in your cupboards, which uh, will make it really nice to 
keep such things organized. I think that that kind of stuff and stuff under your um, oh, your bathroom sink and kitchen sink are hard to keep organized. So it makes it nice when you can find ways to uh, easily organize, also without having to spend any money. That's always key, right? So I'm gonna jump back here a little bit. Today's topic, we've been talking about new beginnings. We're gonna continue to talk about new beginnings because there's a lot involved in a new beginning. And today we're gonna talk about failing forward. And that is a really important concept um, when it comes to new beginnings and progressing in life because one of our first reactions to failure is to bail and, and to fail backwards and to stay stuck. And um, I'd like to see a show of hands how many of you have experienced that. And the thing is, when you learn to have a perspective on positivity, you focus on gratitude, you learn to focus also on failing forward instead of the opposite. So I'm going to get some flour here and get this mixing. Um, while I do that, how, many, how are you guys doing in your efforts um, with your new beginnings and with getting organized? And how many of you have utilized the apps that I shared last week? If you did not visit me and join me last week, the links are below. Good morning, Cindy. And uh, I encourage you to jump back um, on our videos. I'm gonna create a new beginnings playlist and just start feeding all of these in there um, so that if you don't get to watch them live, you can go back and watch them at your leisure because it'll be something that'll progressively help you regardless when you watch. If you're watching on YouTube or um, after the fact, even on Facebook, feel free to comment, leave your comments, leave your questions. I'll continue to address them. I see the comments continually, so I will address that. But how are you guys doing? And what is something that you're grateful for today? I can never list, list just one thing. Good morning, Tammy. I am grateful for so many things right now, and I'm also grateful for you guys. But I'm grateful for my men, I am grateful for my home, I am grateful for the food on our table, and just to get up every day, and to know that I have God to confide in, regardless if we are walking a good day or walking in a valley, you know, that's a blessing. So share with me, what are you thankful for? Also, for those of you that are, it is afternoon, isn't it? Yes, it is, thank you. And of course, some of you are on different coasts and it is afternoon where you are as well. I say that in the morning sometimes and people, it's already afternoon for them. We are three hours behind the East Coast, so. But um, for those of you that are new to Treyer Wilderness or have never seen our videos before, um, my family and I, my mountain man junior, my mountain man and I, we live 100% off grid here in northern Idaho. And we love our life, uh, we love uh, what God is doing in our lives, and we feel it's very important for us to share our faith and our knowledge with the world. And we are so very grateful for all of you joining us. And we also educate at Treyer Wilderness Academy. I am working on a whole lot of new classes that are gonna be coming out and real excited to release those to you. If, you're, if you haven't gone over there, we do have a free bread baking course so you can learn how to make the bread that I'm making right now over there for free. And Cindy says, hugs to a hardworking woman. I am grateful for God's plan. Man, has he been good to me. Hasn't he? He always is, he always is. And he's always there regardless how things may look on the outside. Sometimes we focus so much on the negativity and the struggles we're walking through or our pains that we don't take time to see him in the midst of that. Holly says, I am grateful that God watched over my husband yesterday from getting into a car accident. He had a car sliding towards him and was able to get out of the way. Awesome, awesome, awesome. That's scary, you just gave me goosebumps. <laughs> and you know, on these lines, I'd like to share too that um, Courtney that we've been praying for was down in Arizona with her mother Kelly. 
they were um, she had surgery in December and uh, some of you may not know the story but she has had a brain tumor for a very long time since childhood and um, it's the tumor has been inoperable and it had been in remission and it started to grow again and they were having problems and so they did surgery they had other things involved too there um, and they went in to do surgery and ended up being able to remove the inoperable tumor good morning Terry and that is huge that was a huge answer to prayer um, just amazing and when they were operating there was a small piece of the tumor that could not be removed because it was around a blood vessel so they went back down to Arizona to meet up with the doctors this week and do an MRI to see how things were going and the MRI was blurry so they couldn't get any um, good readings so they got to go back in six to eight weeks and I would like you guys to help me pray and pray hard that this young girl is healed that the, whatever was remaining is gone there's no need for radiation there's no need for chemo and that this young lady can get on with her life and live a normal life she's had so many surgeries and it would just absolutely be amazing to see God work that miracle also this week I was contacted by a friend um, she shared with me that there is an eight-year-old young lady that had surgery this week to have a cancerous tumor removed and while they were operating um, the tumor burst so there is potential that the cancer has spread and I would love for you guys to join with me and help me pray that this young lady also um, is fully healed and that they were successful and that nothing has spread you know our God can work these amazing miracles and we have an enormous prayer list down below and I would just love for you guys to lift these people um, as I always say if you have a prayer need you do not need to list the details you may gladly list it in the comments below that you need prayer you can private message me if you'd like to share you can email me if you'd like to share what you share with me stays with me but we will pray for you and as you can see there's people's names on the prayer list without descriptions as to what they need God knows what they need. You, we just need your help in lifting them in, up to him. Um, thank you so much, Cindy. And she says, prayers are lifted. Terry says, hi, my friend. I'm praying for her. Thank you very much. And Cindy says, off topic, any advice on making beef broth? Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you, can, you can make beef broth um, or bone broth. Um, bone broth is so nutritional. I lived on that for a very long time after my surgery because it was the only thing I could ingest without struggles. And uh, it is just amazing. Um, I will do, I will, I will do a, either a blog post or focus on a video on just that for you. And actually I have some um, videos on both making uh, chicken broth and bone broth, I believe, that are just waiting in the wings. So. If it's okay, I will answer it that way for you. And again, now that we have more of you joining me right now, how are you guys doing? Are you guys doing okay with your plans for the new year? Are you being successful in what you are trying to achieve and accomplish for the year? I am. I am excited. I told you guys last week that I am using the Coach app and... I am creating amazing new habits and I am so excited because some of which were something that I've always wanted to do but because of timing and just everything and I think mentality plays a big role in that which also plays a role in failing forward um, that we view things as work even though we want them to be something pleasurable so that is something that we need to shift in our minds that something becomes pleasurable I have always wanted to journal and I think I said it last week had I journaled every day on our journey here I could have written a book from my journal because the things that happen for one we always say it here you just can't make this stuff up if you would be living and walking out this journey with us right now you would just be walking around constantly shaking your head you just we just can't make this stuff up and I'm sure many of you experience the same kind of stuff you just can't make make the happenings up but I've always wanted to journal I start I start diligently every year I pick it up in the middle of the year somewhere get that back at it at the end of the year but miss so much well 
right now I am 24 days into my journal and I have journaled every day and now it is just so much fun and so much a part of my day that it's just it's habit and it's very awesome the other thing is drinking my water I talk about that all the time and it's just really important for us to take care of ourselves in a healthy way but creating new habits so if you want to work out every day or three times a week start and keep religiously doing it and if something comes up that you can't do it one day you need to create a new beginning and start again and get back into it because we all have things that throw us off that throw our schedules off and that just make you kind of have to juggle things and that's learning how to roll with what we have going on in our lives and being resilient we're gonna have stuff that's gonna hijack our schedule and I've talked to you about that before as far as also viewing some of the hijacks as divine intervention um, some of the hijacks we've been having have been just that you know you could get all upset and freak out because your plans your best set plans were changed but sometimes there's purpose in them sometimes like yesterday for example um, we had to run out to get our air compressor from a job and we got to visit with the homeowners and friends and that was like the best 15-20 minute break of my day and it filled my cup it filled my soul it made me happy because I got to sit and just spend some time with my friend so mama Mona thank you for filling my cup and what's beautiful about that is when you when you take time to do that, it's a it's a mutual thing. You know, you can fill each other's cups and we need that. We need those divine breaks. How many of you say yes to that? Give me some hearts because I know we all need divine breaks sometimes to just breathe. There we go. Oh, lighting is bad, but I got my two breads in here. I'm going to set them over on the stove to rock. Now I'm going to try to get all this off my hands. Okay. So, how many of you guys have struggles with failure? You know, a lot of times we associate um, a lot of other feelings with failure. And um, when we fail, embarrassment may set in. And that's only because we're worried about other people and what they're going to think when you finally remove that it's really awesome that doesn't even matter anymore I, I just my prayer is that you guys progress to where I am I just feel like I have gotten to such an amazing place in my life um, mentally oh, and physically actually I'm really feeling like I'm healing right now and uh, it's a good thing but you get to, I would love to see you guys get to this place of what I call richness I just feel you know, despite our incredibly rough circumstances, life is good, and um, things like failure just—they don't exist in our in our um, dictionary, in our vocabulary, in the regard that we just keep pushing forward. We just keep focusing on what's ahead. Um, focus on our day as it is and uh, you guys still hear me out there it got quiet and that's okay but I just want to make sure you guys are still hearing me sometimes this live feed gets funny but so far so good but struggling when it comes to failure is a real easy thing to do and sometimes we set our, our sights too high for ourselves sometimes we create goals that are just uh, ginormous okay thank you for the hearts I'm seeing some hearts Cindy says struggles are sometimes signs to nudge us into a direction of change happiness comes when you find problems you enjoy solving yeah you know what very well put and that is that is so true you know um, and and failing at something may be because your direction needs to change not necessarily what you're working on but maybe your your angle of attack as well and oftentimes, too, when you look back at the struggle, you realize that that struggle was something that catapulted you forward. 
that that struggle was what was necessary to teach you what you needed to learn to move forward. So it's perspective, it's being willing to show ourselves grace and not stopping when things go wrong and when things go astray from what our, our ideal picture was. Um, sometimes our picture isn't his picture also. And when we are chasing a dream that isn't in line with God, you're going to struggle the whole way. And I've been there already in that, in that um, scenario, and it's not a pretty place. And it's very different from the place we are in right now. Um, I just, I don't recall too many blessings on that walk. It was just a constant head head banging until I realized that I was walking on the wrong path and I should have been walking on the other one so we all go through that too but and, and it is true that you know happiness does come from finding problems that you enjoy solving and that's part of part of the, the process too is that you know there are going to be problems that we need to solve along the way to make the journey or or the end goal um, a much better looking or more productive uh, goal. You know, we need to walk through the fine tuning of things. So, I want to encourage you that when you hit a point where you feel you've hit failure, don't let it discourage you. Let it, let it display the next stair on the staircase. And remember too that sometimes failure is a result of pushing forward too fast. Sometimes you need to take those baby steps instead of being the bull in the china shop and trying to get to the other side of the store before you even get in the door. So it's really important that we learn how to handle um, failure and sometimes what we consider failure to others isn't you know it doesn't look like failure to others we are very hard on ourselves uh, we've talked about being our biggest um, critics Terry says not giving up is a struggle <laughs> but it humbles me and makes me get on my knees and pray yeah you know guys I told you before about strengthening your faith and your trust muscles and that comes from perseverance James 1 3 um, I think it's 3 through 5 uh, is my favorite, favorite verse on perseverance. Who you are is defined by what you're willing to struggle for. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm reading a book by Martin. Um, I gotta look. Oh, and I don't have it in here this week. It was in last week's. Oh, it totally went blank. But anyway, I want to share this with you. Okay, it's on my phone. Give me a second here. Well, I'll see if I can recall it. Give me a second. There, there is a lot to be said about how our, how we perceive and how we view things. I'm always talking about a positive mindset versus a negative mindset. So there has been research done that proves that if a player on a team goes out to play the, the game and he's focusing on winning, he performs greater than the person who is going out on the field and focusing on not losing. Because the person focusing on not losing has a pessimistic mindset and is not going to do as good. So do you see the difference? And I love those kind of analogies. And, you know, we try to put those practices into our daily lives because our thoughts matter and, and our perspective on things matters more than anything else. Our thoughts, is, our, our thoughts are what guides our bodies, not only in how we function and how we think, but how healthy we are. You know, you wake up and you have a pain and you're like, oh my gosh, I hurt, I hurt all over. Or you get up and you do feel the pain, but you're like, you know what, I am gonna have such a great day. And you get up and you disregard the pain and you keep moving. 
your body will soon disregard that pain where the other way around your body is going to go oh she says she's got pain there's pain and it's gonna have intense pain and it's gonna continue so our minds can can heal our bodies our minds can heal us in in um, ways that we've put uh, really negative thoughts into our heads so keep that in mind when it comes to hitting a bump in the road on in the direction of of your uh, goals because it really 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 makes a difference Cindy says this is a great conversation but I must go no worries sweet friend you can either hop back on and catch it later or we will catch you next week um, have a great rest of your day God bless sweet friend okay I'm gonna read something to you regarding failure Psalm 73 26 my flesh may fail but God is the strength of my heart overcoming failure as you drive towards your destiny you're sure to hit potholes along the way or take some wrong turns or forget to check your gas gauge and run out of fuel the truth is the only way to avoid failure is to not leave your driveway wouldn't that be something so in the words of author William Soroyan Good people are good because they come to wisdom through failure. The real issue in life isn't whether or not you're going to fail, but whether you're going to learn from your experience and turn it into the wisdom needed to succeed. In a survey of successful people, not one of them viewed their mistakes as failures. They considered them learning experiences or tuition paid or opportunities for growth. That's the winning attitude. Henry Ward Beecher said, it's defeat that turns bone to flint, gristle into muscle, and makes men invincible. Do not then be afraid of defeat. You are never so near victory as when you're defeated in a good cause. So the next time you fail at something, stop and ask yourself, where do I go from here? What have I learned? Am I grateful for this experience? How can I turn it into success? Who else has failed like this and how can they help me? How can my experience help others? Did I actually fail or just fall short of an unrealistically high goal? Where did I succeed as well as fail? Then go one step further and ask God for greater insight. If you do, you'll grow stronger and wiser because of what you've been through. Isn't that true? And one key thing that that says that we need to focus on too is, where did we succeed? You gotta look at that. When you have a situation where you feel you've failed, you've also gotta look at the picture to see where you have succeeded and, and just how you need to adjust things. Oh, good morning, afternoon, Sylvia. I'm confused today. <laughs> yes, I am on. I'm trying to get back on since yesterday didn't work. We lost internet all day yesterday because of our snow. And I'm actually running toward the end of things here, so you can always catch the replay. But good to see you and I ask everybody how they are doing with their goals and if they've tried any of the apps I think you were the one yesterday who mentioned you like pen and paper and that is totally okay keep using your pen and paper if that is what what works for you and anybody else all right now a couple Bible verses that I wanted to share with you too um, I always think of this when I think of all of you Numbers 6, 24 through 26. We pray for you guys every day. And may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. I want that for you guys every day. Every day. And, and we need to hold on tight to the promises that we are given. Another one is Isaiah 40, 31. We hang on very tight to this one also. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. We've got to remember where we can get our empowerment from. It is always good to spend time with friends, especially godly friends. They do help fill you up in a, a godly way. But nobody can fill us up the way God can. And I want you guys to remember that because when you are struggling with any part of your walk, your daily walk, that's where we need to turn our too. I've been doing a lot of meditation and a lot of praying and a lot of journaling. I write in my journal as if I'm praying at times. It's really, really gratifying. 
And then this is something I want you guys to think of also. This is Galatians 6, 9. We are called to do good. And sometimes doing good can be very difficult. Sometimes people can be tough to please. Sometimes um, in an effort to do good, it's a great struggle. It's a great climb to the top of the mountain. And I'm sure we can all recognize that and agree on that. But this is an important verse, Galatians 6, 9. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. So I'm really hoping that these words today are an encouragement to you. I know we all walk through the area of failure. We also uh, are very hard on ourselves when one day we are not being um, as successful or productive as we wanted to be or we fall short of a goal for a day. You know, we just got to give yourself grace one step at a time and one day at a time and, and keep focusing. Every day, if you do something to chip away at your goal, eventually you, were, you will hit the mark and you need to remember that. Diana says, just saw two, Sylvia, a boost to my day. Ah, thank you, Diana. I hope you are doing well and I am praying for you to find a place. God will reveal the perfect place for you in his timing, unfortunately, but it will be revealed to you. Tammy says she's struggling at times, but will never give up. Awesome. You know what, guys? That is the key thing. We, we all have bad days. We all are entitled to have and go through varying emotions. The key thing is that we allow ourselves to go through them. Sometimes you have to process anger. Sometimes you have to process disappointment. Sometimes you have to process being depressed. All of those things are okay. Go through that emotion and keep going. Don't get stuck in that emotion. That's the key thing. And not giving up is, is so courageous and it is um, so powerful. You know, to know that, you know, so you had a bad day, but tomorrow you're grabbing your bootstraps and you're gonna hit the pavement running. You know, it's important that we, we give ourselves that and that we know that it's okay to have a bad day. Some days it's just good to walk away from it all because nothing good is coming of it. You start working on your bread and you forget to put an ingredient in, everything flops and you know, you just walk away. Sometimes it's good to walk away. I walk away sometimes. I will go for a walk. I will hit the woods. I will talk to God. I will listen to an inspirational podcast, which reminds me, I think I, I'm going to share a podcast link on uh, Treyer Wilderness's um, page feed. I was listening to it the other day and it was really, really powerful. Diana says, thank you so much. His timing is rarely ours. I know, exactly. But you know what? His blessing is always better than we could have ever imagined. So waiting on him, which is what we are doing right now, is waiting on him and trusting in him and having total faith in the outcome. You know, you can look at it as a grueling thing or you can look at it as a really exciting thing, like what's on the other side of that roller coaster ride as you hit the next hill. That's how I view it. You know, waiting waiting can be tough, but if you know what's on the other side is going to be awesome, it's pretty empowering, right? So, just perspective. It's perspective, guys. So, I can see my, my guys working back there. They're putting up one of the big boards. Things are just turning oh, so awesome. I'm going to continue to share with you um, here, but I've also got a couple clips that I'm going to be sharing on our YouTube channel. The Mountain Man is inspiring you men and women. He's on the trap line, but he's doing a lot of inspiration and has his own little ministry. It's a little loud. Hopefully you guys can hear me today. It's been quite something. There's lots of noise going on. But I'm going to quickly pray for us and uh, send you on your way and let you all have a fantastic day. Um, and I will be back on next Wednesday at 1030 Pacific Time as long as the weather cooperates and our connection cooperates. But Father God, we just thank you for your love and mercies, for keeping your hands on all of us and just protecting us all like you did, um, I believe it was Holly's, I just totally blanked, I believe it was Holly's uh, husband, or was it Patty Ann, I can't remember and I'm sorry. But thank you for keeping your hand up protection and your hedge of protection on them from um, getting in an accident and 
Lord, just I ask that you lift all these people. These people come here each week because they want to be fed. And I love the community that we are creating and we feed each other. And Lord, I just ask that you um, fill their needs and guide their weeks and help them in their walk, whether it a good walk or a struggle. Just be there with them. Let them feel your presence. And dear Lord, we have so many on our prayer list. Just lift them all. We lift them to you. And uh, Pat Kenny just popped in my mind. Uh, he's been struggling greatly with his heart. And um, with Courtney and little Bailey. And Lord, you know all the others on the list. Tia needs some heavy prayers. And Terry needs some heavy prayers. And I ask that you uh, lift Chad and his family also. And, and Lord, I just, I love you. And I thank you so much for what you are doing in our lives, doing in our community, but I, I ask even more and thank you even more for what you are going to do. And Lord, I just ask this, that you protect everyone and keep everyone throughout their week until we meet again. And I ask this in your holy and mighty, precious name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. <laughs> it's very loud and it's probably going to get louder. So on that note, you guys have a fantastic day. Terry says, thank you for the prayers. God bless you, my friend. God bless you too. God bless you all. And, and thank you for taking the time out of your busy day to join me. And please feel free to leave me comments. Leave me questions because easy, easy. I'm going to show you what he's doing before I jump off of here. Okay. Hang on. So he's got the boards in on the back wall. He's now putting this nice baseboard up. I am thankful for that man. He puts his heart and soul into everything. Don't. He just gave me the hairy eyeball on film. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you again for joining me today. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you next Wednesday, 10.30 Pacific time at facebook.com slash Wilderness. Love you all. God bless.